One of the many applications of uh, the integral is finding the area under the curve. Now this time we're going to uh, do a different approach on solving or finding the area under the curve of a given function. We're going to use Riemann sums as a method of computing for the area under the curve, which basically giving us or measuring the estimated area using the geometric figures. So for today, we're going to see rectangles and trapezoids to approximate the area of a given curve. There are methods here that we are going to use today to approximate the value of area under the curve without using definite integral. So the first method is the right to left method and if you will notice we'll have some overestimation that's happening in our Riemann sums method because using right to left method will give you an overestimated area because of the excess value that it's showing in our rectangles. So this is one of the methods that we will use today, the right to left method, starting from right, moving to the left. And the second method that we are using will be the left to right method, which is giving us an underestimated um, area under the curve using our rectangles. So now you're going to start at the uh, leftmost side of your rectangle moving to the right. So that's why it's called the left to right method. And the underestimated area here will be the area that's not covered by your rectangles. Now the most accurate um, estimate that you will be able to use for um, among the three methods that we're using is the midpoint formula because here now we're starting at the middle of your rectangle and then we're finding the area on each of this rectangle to approximate the area under the curve and I'm going to show you some examples on how to use each method in one function. Now for my first example I have to find the area of the region bounded by f of x is equal to x squared plus 1 given the interval at 0 and 4 using L4. Now L4 is our code for left to right method using 4 rectangles. So what we need to do is from the interval 0 to 4, we're going to divide it with 4 rectangles to be able to find the area under the curve. So this is my illustration of my Riemann sums method using left to right method. So I have here four rectangles because we are required to do four rectangles according to the problem and we're going to use it to approximate the area under the curve. So let's start the process by first since it's left to right method you're going to start at the leftmost side of your area which is at zero so to find the height or the length of your first rectangle all you have to do is to plug in the value of zero which is the value of x in your um, axis right here to your function to find the height of your rectangle so in this case the height or the length is equal to f of zero equal to zero squared plus one so this is equal to one unit that's why my length for my first rectangle is equal to one now all I need to, to do is to find the width of my first rectangle which obviously equal to one because it's just one unit right here so we have one here and multiplying the length and the width will give us the area of the rectangle which gives us 1. Now all we need to do is to repeat the steps by finding the height of each of our rectangle and to find the height or the length of your rectangle all you need to do is to plug in that value of x to your function so you'll find the y value. So for the second rectangle the height or the length of your rectangle will be at f of 1. So f of 1 is equal to 2, so this is equal to 2 right here, and your width will still be the same, which is 1, that's why I have 2 times 1, which gives me 2. So for the third rectangle, my length will be equal to f of 2, which is 5, so I have 5 times 1 equal to 5, and for my fourth rectangle, which starts at f of 3 right here, giving me 10 as the height of my fourth rectangle, so I have 10 times 1, which gives me 10. Now to find the area under the curve, just add the four areas of your rectangles and you'll have the approximated area of your curve using Riemann sums method. So we have 18 units squared, which is underestimating on our area under the curve. And this is the left to right method for function x squared plus 1 on the interval 0 to 4. 
Now, what if we're using a different method on estimating our area under the curve? So instead of left to right, let's use right to left method. And here's my illustration on this method. So we are still using the same function, x squared plus 1. Same graph, same function, but different method. So this time, we're going to use the right end method. So to, uh, to organize my table, I have the area of the first rectangle, second, third, and fourth rectangle. So let's focus on our first rectangle right here. So this time, I'm not going to start at zero or the leftmost side of my rectangle. I'm going to start at the rightmost side of my first rectangle, which is at one. Now, if x is equal to one, my y value is equal to two by plugging it to the value of f of x. So this time, my length is equal to 2, and my width will still be equal to 1. So the area of my first rectangle will be equal to 2. And for my second rectangle, now I'm going to start at x equal to 3, so the height or the length of my rectangle will be at 5. Multiply it to the width of your rectangle, which is still 1, which gives you 5 as an area of your second rectangle. Now for the third rectangle, my x is at 3, so therefore my length is at 10. So therefore, multiply it by 1 unit and you'll get 10 units squared for your third rectangle. And for the last rectangle, to accommodate the interval from 0 to 4, our height or the length of the rectangle will be equal to 17. So we'll have 17 units for our fourth rectangle. Add them all up and you'll have your area under the curve using the right-end method, which is equal to 34 square units. Now, comparing it to my first method, my first method gave me 18 units squared, which is underestimating. This time, we have 34 square units, which is an overestimate value of the area under the curve. Because noticeably, you'll see the rectangles or excess of rectangles on our area. So let's try a different approach, and this time, let's use the midpoint method. So this time, we're not going to start at the left or the right. We're going to start at the middle of your rectangle. So we're using the same function x squared plus 1. We're going to use the same graph, but this time it's going to be the midpoint method. And for this method, we're going to start in the middle of 0 and 1. So the middle of 0 and 1 is basically 0.5. So if you use your function to find the height or the length of your curve, your length will be 1.25 because 0.5 squared plus 1 is 1.25. So that is my first length of my tri rectangle. And the width will still be equal to 1 because it's not changing. My partition is not changing. It's just the height of the rectangle that is changing. So now I have 1.25 times 1, which gives me 1.25. Repeating the steps, this time I'm going to start at 1.5. At 1.5, the height of my rectangle will be 3.25. And my width will still be the same, which is 1. So now I have 3.25 for the area of my second rectangle. And for my third rectangle, using the midpoint method, my height will be at 7.25. Multiply it by 1 unit, and I'll have 7.25. And for my last area, which is 13.25 for its length, and the width of 1 will give me 13.25 as its area, and adding them all up, it's going to give me 25 square units. So that's my area under the curve, and you will see the difference between the estimated value for each method. So we have 18 units squared for left to right method. For right to left method, we have um, um, 34 square um, units, and now we have 25 square units for our midpoint method. Now, for the last method that I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you a different geometric figure. And this time, I'm not using rectangle. I'm using a trapezoid. Now, the trapezoid method is probably um, going to be the m most accurate method for among the four methods that I've shown you today because now the error or the margin of error is going to be smaller because of the shape of your geometric figure. So in this trapezoid method, I'm going to use the formula for finding the area of a trapezoid, which is one half of length plus the other length times its width. Now, 
to find L1 and L2, that means we're going to use two points in our first trapezoid. So for my first trapezoid, I know I'm going to have four trapezoids le later on, but I'm just focusing on one trapezoid right now so that you will see how I'm finding the area of one trapezoid to the other. So the area of my first trapezoid from one up until zero, all I need to do is find length one, which starts at f of one. So f of one is one squared plus one, which gives me two. So the height of my trapezoid on this side of your trapezoid is equal to two, and the height of your trapezoid from this side of your geometric figure will be f of zero or zero squared plus one, which is one. So now we have length one and length two, add them together, multiply by one half, times the width, and you'll get the area of your first trapezoid. So the area of your first trapezoid is one half, two plus one, times the width of one, which gives you three over two. So the area of the first, excuse me, trapezoid is equal to three over two. And we're going to repeat that three more times to find the area of our x squared plus one from zero to four. And here's how it's done. So same function, same interval, same graph, but different method. So our first trapezoid is here. We already computed for that. So we have one half of f of zero plus f of one times one, which gives us one half of one plus two. So the area of our first trapezoid is three over two. Now for my second trapezoid, I need two points, which is f of two and f of one. So we have half of f of 1 plus f of 2 times the width of 1, which gives me 7 over 2. Now for my third triangle, or I mean trapezoid, I have f of 2 plus f of 3 times 1, and then multiplied by 1 half, which gives me 15 over 2. And for my last trapezoid, I'm going to have half of f of 3 plus f of 4 times the width of 1 is equal to 22 or 27 over 2. Now add them all up and your area will be equal to 26 square units. And that is the last met method of finding the area under the curve using the Riemann sums.